Okay, so good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's well and uh, interested in looking at what we can do with the 3D panel design. So my name's John Spathicky. I work for IGEXAO. Uh, it's a French company based in Toulouse. We have about 400 employees and um, we were um, majority purchased basically by uh, Schneider Electric about three years ago now. So we are part of the Schneider Electric group as well. Um, now the software I'm going to show this morning is 3D panel. Hi, right, good morning. Someone else has joined in. Simon, I think. <clears throat> Your microphone is still on. It's okay at the moment though. So um, we're using, a, I'm going to be showing and demonstrating a package called uh, 3D Panel Plus from IGXAO. Um, IGXO has been around for about 30 years and we just produce electrical design software. So this is just a, an enhancement or a, a progression that's a natural thing. The 3D package has been around for a good sort of three or four years now. Um, and it's currently up to V2R2 as a version. Uh, now the 3D package works either as a standalone or as an add-on to C Electrical or C Electrical Expert. Um, so what I'm gonna be showing here is it as an add-on to C Electrical so that we have an electrical CAD package in the background and we have then the, uh, the 3D design behind that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into C Electrical to begin with and just put together a quick uh, circuit diagram so that we can use that as the basis for the design. So you need some, you don't necessarily need this, you can actually just design the 3D first, um, but it's much easier to work out the wiring, the connectivity, the cabling, and the parts information when we're working on the schematic. Certainly it's what I find. I'm gonna go into file and new, and I'm gonna create a new project. Uh, dodgy spelling, there we go. So I'm gonna just use the template to create that, click okay, and then start creating some pages in there. So I'm gonna start with a circuit diagram. I oh, see just a schematic page. And I'm going to add a description saying this is the incoming power and some motors on there. As you design schematics, you build up pre-existing information so you can break this down into circuits so they can be reused. So what I've got here is some pre-assembled circuits. So I've done a bit of work to begin with. I'm hitting the space bar and inserting it zero zero so I know where it's going to appear on the page. So these are circuits which you can move bits around, you can take them off. They are still separate, but they contain circuit uh, symbols and wires already on there. And if I double click on a symbol, I can see that it already has a part number assigned. So this is just for speed. These are common parts that I might be using. And I'm gonna place a motor circuit. So I'm gonna put a couple of circuits down just so we have some data to work with. If there are wire numbers and they haven't been used in the project, then they will remain on there. So I've got quite a few wire numbers coming in. I'm just going to right click, add a new page. Uh, I'm just going to follow this in with an inverter or VSD drive. So we're just going to put this together. We're not really stressing the uh, circuit diagram design too much, but C Electrical is a very easy package to use to put your designs together. Just put a safety relay in. Again, we're using mostly Schneider components here for obvious reasons, um, but you can use any manufacturer. We support um, hundreds of different manufacturers and we have a web catalog, which our content team constantly update with all the main manufacturers and all the obscure ones as well. So let's put in a PLC main section. I'm just gonna put a, an input and an output on there. And again, these have PLC IO information already assigned, but it might be I've got a spreadsheet of IO information that I can attach to this. Um, I'm using the advanced level package. We sell the C electrical basic, standard, and advanced. So I'm using all the functionality here with the advanced. I'm gonna put some inputs on here. And again, it's just a click, space bar, and zero zero to insert that. And again, these are all separate symbols which are referenced throughout the project. Um, if we see any referencing, we can double click on the advanced level and it will take us and show us where that's connected to. 
So there's connectivity within the project, project showing how all the uh, elements are cross-referenced. One more page. i put some outputs on here. Okay, um, at the moment we've got PLC addressing on the uh, cards which are then being transferred onto the wires as well. If we go into electrical, just to show that information, if I go to generate the wire numbers, delete the information. So we've lost all the wire numbers across the project. If I use page up to go down through the pages, there's no wire numbers on here now. We have some different wire types assigned here. So on this one, it's an L1 type. This is an L2, an L3, and so on. So we can have different attributes assigned to these. And we've got some power wires. Numbering, generate. I'm going to reset any size and color information. And I'll see all that wiring information appear on there. I can line things up quite quickly just by selecting a group of wires, choosing the alignment, and say, right, line all of these up. And they should all align. I've inadvertently aligned. The push button as well. I'm just going to hold down shift and just do it that way. Um, just have a look back on the PLC pages. If I go back to there, I can see that those have all been numbered now with the correct information on there. Uh, when we go into the 3D panel, we get a decision to make as to whether we let the software, the 3D design, decide the, the best route for the wiring. If we have a look at a situation here between these two push buttons that might perhaps be on the door and this contactor that's on the gear plate. If we look at the wiring information that C Electrical has provided, it's suggesting both push buttons are wired back down onto the gear plate onto this device. So if we create a template for the 3D and say we're using the wiring information, it uses that literally and forces those two wires to go down to there. Whereas if when we create the 3D panel, we use the net routing, it looks at that as a whole net and it works out the shortest routing. So let's have a go at doing that. I'm going to right click create a 3D page from here. Give it a description, 3D layout. And I'm going to choose net routing. This is an optimized routing. So it opens up into a different environment. This is the add-on part. This is a 3D environment. And as I say, this is V2R2. This is a fairly recent version. In this environment, we've got a series of different panels for the different information we can get hold of. So we've got a list of any components that are used in the project, and we can list these just by clicking on load from function, click OK, and we get a list of all the components that we've used in our project. Each one we can click and place, and we'll see a 3D model appear on our cursor. Using the wheel, we can click and drag to rotate and hold down control using the wheel as a button to pan. So we've got quite a lot of control just using the wheel itself. I'm going to right click to cancel that. I'm going to start actually with, under this symbol section, I'm going to take an enclosure. So I haven't specified that in the drawing yet. I'm going to go down to Schneider Universal Enclosures. We've got enclosures obviously from all the main ones, from Rittle, from ETA, from um, Eaton and so on. I'm going to go down to the Schneider ones though, and I'm going to choose a spatial steel floor, a spatial SM without a panel, and <clears throat> I'm going to choose. Uh, maybe I am choosing the wrong one. Let me just have a quick check. Spatial SF. I'm just going to grab one of these. It's quite a big panel, and you see it's actually a series of other components. So when you buy it, you get it as a kit, which includes the roof and the door. And when I click on them, they just highlight on their own. If I double click, I can reposition one of those elements. So I can move the door off or I can double click. As I move it over a particular area, I get these mounting snaps appear where I can just click to place it. So positioning things in 3D is a very easy procedure. I'm going to minimize this for the moment. And I'm going to go into the accessories, which is just a bit further down for steel FS. I'm going to go into here 
and choose some side panels. So I'm going to choose, this is 1200 high by 400 deep, I think. Yep, and I'm just going to drop that on. Now, again, when you buy it, it comes as a kit of two sides. So one of these sides is added on. And I can double click, spin it around a little bit and just drop it onto that side. So I've now put the sides on. So the assembly is a very straightforward process. We've had a look at components and symbols. There's a separate tab here, well, panel for Explorer, which lets us see all of the models that we've got on the drawing. And when I click on that, anything that's selected, I can see highlighted and I can say, turn that one off. So I've got a view of how they're related and whether I can see them and whether I can actually collect, uh, select them so I can lock them so they can't be selected. I'm gonna go back into the symbols. Now I've taken the door off. Scroll down a bit. I'm going to put a uh, a two entry cable gland on the bottom. So I'm just going to drag, drop it on the bottom, and I'm also going to put. Let's scroll down a bit further. A plinth on there. So I'm going to say front plinth. This is 600 wide. So I'm looking for maybe 100 deep times 600. I'll use that one. And again, an area appears when I move the component near to where it needs to be, and it just snaps into position. Side plinths, I'm going to choose 100 by 400, so those ones, and again, just snap and place them. Just double click. I'm going to swivel that one around. This one actually has an option to to turn it either 180 degrees or as it is, um, so you can tab to switch it around if necessary. Um, one last thing, this comes without a, a gear plate at the back. It just has a back panel on there, so I'm going to add a gear plate which is part of some uh, common accessories which go with any panel. So mounting plate, I'm going to choose a steel one, and I want it 1200 by 600. So that's the one there. As I move it into position, I'm holding it in the bottom left-hand corner, and I can see where it's going to mount on this bottom rail. And as I move my cursor, I can see there's a snap, a mounting plane there. Once I select that, I then get some points. So this can be mounted at... 25 millimeter intervals. I can see on my X, it's moving between those. So I can position it at a particular point and I can have several of these in the same panel if I've got the space. Or I can double click, drop it and put it right to the back so I've got as much space as I possibly can. I've got the grid displayed in front of this. So I'm gonna click on that just to show that I can switch it off if I need to. Um, and in fact, what I want to do next is say that this is the uh, component the surface that I want to be mounting on so now that I've got my panel pretty much put together I'm going to select this mounting uh, plate I'm going to right click in the Explorer and then say I want to hide all except that and its children but well, it doesn't have anything on there but I've now hidden everything also it has two different surfaces that I can mount things on now these have been added by our content team so all of the components that you're provided with and that you can download from the internet um, come with these different surfaces so you can right click and say that's my working plane and that's half the uh, the task of working transferring from 2d to 3d is understanding about the fact that the software needs to know what depth you're going to be inserting these objects so we've got some transparent icons across the top which allow us to uh, switch straight into a different view so that's the top view the back view I can go to a side view and look at it from the side but these allow us to quickly zoom in on a particular view across the top we haven't really used any of these menus but there is a main one here for cabinet which allows us to place cabinets mounting plates rails wires and cables and channels so this is the main sort of electrical side of the software which allows us to um, arrange and choose how things are connected i'm going to start by putting some din rail to mount my components on so we've got some predefined rails very straightforward, I click on that, I select to place it on the page somewhere, and I can drag it to a particular size. If I right click, it gives me another piece the same length. And in fact, I've got this series of options at the top for snapping, and one of these is to snap to objects on the same plane. So now that I've got that, I can snap and centralize it and say, I want it to be in line with it. I might put one bit further down as well. And again, in line with the other ones. I can also right click, finish, and on any of these, I can do 
a number of copies in the X or Y direction. So I could actually say I want five of these going down the back plate at 150 millimeter intervals. So many different options there for alignment and sizing of the actual uh, components. In the list of components now, I can start selecting and placing these onto the panel. So if I click on the first one, A1, this is a drive. So I'm just going to drop it actually on the back plate. It doesn't go onto the rail at all. Notice it snaps onto the back plate. And when I click on the back plate, it actually gets selected. So the software sees a relationship. It's creating it on the fly and it's saying on this mounting plate, we have some DIN rail and we have this component here, A1. And because of that relationship, we can also produce at any point any of the manufacturing information we need for drilling it. So for instance, if we're sending it out for drilling, um, say to, to Perforex, I can right click, generate the drill template, create it as a DXF file, and you can see here the outline of the components and any drill holes that are required. And the same thing on the door, we can put cutouts for push buttons and meters and so on. But that information is being built up automatically as we're designing this. Um, if we go back to the components, I'm just going to put some on here. I'm going to put F1. That was a safety relay. If I go and place this near to one of the pieces of DIN rail, it snaps into position. So again, we've got functionality there. We've got a mounting plane which allows this to snap into position on the DIN rail. So now it's seen as being a child of the DIN rail. It's placed on there. If we select the DIN rail first, anything we select automatically gets added. And we can say, actually, we want a bit of a space here, 10 millimeter gap. And you see, you can define those gaps or you can take those off. I can double click, place it on there, and it snaps as close as possible to that particular device. I've got some motors underneath. I can see those. I'm not going to put those in the panel, but um, for the PLC, there is a rack here or a, a mounting plate. I'm going to choose that click that and it does snap onto that piece of DIN rail. So that's ready. If I click on a PLC, it's letting me select that as a mounting plane. And again, as with the back plate, I can select which position it goes into. So very quick and easy to just select and place that. It's child's play, really. Um, I've got a couple of extra components, uh, isolator. Now we've got a, a breaker here, which has got an auxiliary contact block. I'm just gonna say no for the moment and just show you this. Once it's placed in, the auxiliary, any additional blocks can be added just by tapping K. Snaps into position. It could have several points that it could snap to, but once I've got the right position, I just click on, yes, that's fine. And now that's seen as being a, a child of that element. If I click on it on its own, that can still be selected. So you can still assign multiple parts in the schematic and each one can have its own graphic. It's gonna go a bit further down, just put some of these on. Just insert, I should have selected the actual DIN rail. Now I've got some push buttons. I'm gonna put that on the um, on the door. Here I've got, oh, it's a power supply. So I'm gonna drop that just down there. What else have I got? Some terminals. So I'm going to click on the terminal. Now there's lots of these X1 terminals. So what it's saying is it's found several X1s. Does it want me to insert those or insert them together? So I'm going to say yes. And it provides all those terminals on my cursor at once. I can zoom in, drop them down. And that's a, quite a quick job to just place those. I've only got a few of these X2 terminals. X3 and some X4 terminals. So I've got a couple of different terminal strips that I'm using on here. Um, if I want to put a separator on here, I haven't actually assigned these in the in the project. Um, if I select a terminal, I can go into the list of symbols and let me just type in separator. I can search through the list of symbols. Let's just find something two millimeter thick, let me just click on that again. If I select which terminal I want it to go onto, I just tap the letter K to mount it either there or there or there. That's a good one. Click on OK and that's on there now. So I've got a separator. So you can add your own end plates and separators. Each one should have its own part number on there as well. 
So at the end of this, I've got a complete bill of materials. Each DIN rail can also be aligned, so I can right click on a DIN rail and say organize to the left. Everything shifts up and I've got it all arranged nice and neat. So I've got quite a few components on there. At the beginning, when I loaded this information from the circuit, as well as the actual symbols, it also brought in the net information, the actual potentials. So if we have a look on there, we can see all these wire numbers from the project. P3 has got a list of three symbols, Q4, S1, and S2. So it's got the extremities. It knows what's connected, but it hasn't, when I click on wires, defined any wires yet because it hasn't analyzed where everything's positioned. If I right click in the nets area, I can quickly assign the routing just by route all nets. Very simple. It warns me all components must be visible to route them. So I can't turn any symbols off if I, if I want them to be included in that routing. It whizzes through what's on the panel. I know what I've forgotten. Ah, okay. So <clears throat> everything is wired. It's an optimal wiring, um, but it's a little bit messy, isn't it? Let me just delete those. I'm going to put some cable A's on there. Now you can do this either from predefined channels, which are just sort of rectangles, or I can go into symbols. I'm going to go to beta duct and grab some of theirs. Close slot. Uh, let's take a 25 by 50. Um, so if I go to a top view, I can put the cableways on here. It should be quite quick. I'm on a 25 millimeter grid, so it's not particularly fine. Let me just take it down a bit. I'll take it down to a five millimeter grid. You can change the grid size at any point, but it gives you a bit more control over where you can position things. There we go. It's all a bit tight. I think I might have to move some bits. Um, if you're placing a component down, if you hit Z, it rotates about the Z axis. And likewise, if you hit X or Y, it rotates about that axis. So positioning and stretching, very straightforward. I'm using the object snaps to just make sure it snaps to the end of the object. It's a parametric design. So on the cable ways, even though I've stretched it, it's still the same space in between the slots, which is fairly important. I'm just going to move these two down a little bit and just move this down as well I'm just going to move this up a bit if you want to be quite accurate about the movement there is a modify command which gives you a sort of ACS with different axes on there and you can drag it in a certain direction you can hit the space bar and say I want it a certain distance so if I just type in 10 it's moved it 10, I can t click on, that's okay, and it's put it in there. So we've got some wireways in there. Let's see how the routing is handled now. If I go to route all nets, doesn't take too long, but that's much neater. OK, so we've got the wires being channeled through those wireways. At any point, we can check on a wireway and we can say, give me some information on the, the uh, fill of that wireway. So there's an info button and it shows us a side profile where we can click and drag. To say how many have we got at that particular point or what wires are going down that way. Now, I can see that there are a lot right at the end and they're all going around from this point over to the PLC. So it might be that I'd move a whole series of terminals to the other end, perhaps. So maybe these ones here, if I just select those and then move those up to this end. And you see that the uh, the wiring information is dynamic. So once I move a component, it rechecks what the optimal route is. So now by moving those, if I just say, show me the information now, that's a bit more even. So I've actually spaced it out a bit better. Um, any wire can be manually routed. Uh, I'm going to choose a different one to that one. I'm going to choose that one there. 
when, it, when I click on the wire, I can see where it goes to, just about. Um, but I can also right click, go to wires and say, I want to change that route path. So you can manually change it and you see the implication, the length difference. If I say instead of that way, go that way. So clicking on each of these paths gives me an alternative. And any one of those I can say, well, actually, yeah, that's the preferred way rather than that way. So I can se select that path. I can also lock it. So when I reroute it, it stays with that path. Any of these Y ways, just to be aware of this, can also be assigned some properties. So when I click on properties, it shows me the information. It's called Y way 107. So it's automatically been numbered. It's got a cross-sectional area, a channel density. So one would be completely full of wires. 0 0.8 allows for the fact that they're circular and that you're going to have spaces between them. So they're never going to be fully dense, fully uh, filled. And then the channel occupancy, we're saying that we can have up to 80% fill, so 20% free. So that's where that orange bar at the top, this is the free space that we've got. And you can see at each of these points, that's the filling. So we've got about 45, maybe 50% at that point there. Obviously, if there's not enough space, you either put a larger piece of cable weight or you reroute some of the wires. On any of these uh, cable ways, we can also put a segregation code or several. So I can say I want control wires and signals on this side. And on this side, I can say I want perhaps L1, 2 and 3 type wires or high voltage. And then with the signals, we can also put segregation information to say these are segregated in this way so that when you run the routing, it automatically avoids certain cable ways. So it's great for being able to do that. Uh, if I want to see that routing information, I can produce a report, which can be a useful way of displaying the information. So I can go to print, print report. I can produce a whole variety of different parts lists. There's a wire routing one here. If I just open it. And I get a list of those wire numbers, what it connects from and to the wire ways that it goes through the size, color, and then the length, obviously, in millimeters in this case. So an accurate report on how I've decided I want this to be wired. If you've got lots of panels going out and you want consistency, that's a great way of uh, achieving it just with a very simple report. Back to the design. So OK, we're going to go back and just show the whole panel. Remember, there is a panel around this. We've just turned it off. And I'm going to just work on the, the door for a moment. I'm going to right click and say hide everything except the door and its children. And in fact, the, the handle is part of that as well. Just going to click on the door and there it is. Uh, I'm going to set the outer surface as being the working area. So I'm going to right click, set that as the working plane, and then go back into the list. If you remember, we had some push buttons which haven't been placed yet. If I want to filter the information, I can filter it just by clicking at the top of a column. Use a text filter maybe here, begins with minus S, and I see already, yeah, okay, it's got the right bits. So any of the information could be filtered to just get the information you're interested in. You can hold down control and just pick these parts which are flush push buttons. I'm gonna click on insert and I can place these in. Now if I want it at a particular point, I can hover and use the center point, hit the tab, and I can say right in the X direction, I want it minus. 200 in the y direction. I don't want it to go up or down, zero and zero in the z. So it's moved it across that distance. And now I can position the others. It's probably a bit close, to be honest. I can move it back. It was a bit too far. Um, I'm not going to select the other ones, just to hold, hold in control so I can select all of those. Click on insert. And I'm just going to place those down perhaps in line with the existing ones. Now, at the moment, you can see those are going straight through. And again, just to check, if I right click and say, show me the drill hole information, I can see the outline of the components with the circle that's going to be cut out. So this is designed with particular colors for Perforex uh, machine cutting, drilling. Um, but we've also got options there for 
uh, Steinhauer and also producing charts. So if I produce charts, it gives me the outline, gives it a code and then gives that information in more detail in the chart above. So plenty of information for assembly, for uh, manufacturing. On the back of this, um, I'm just going to go in and set the back as being the working area. And I'm going to put some just in rail on the back just so we can actually wire to that. So this keeps it a bit tidier. I'm going to go back to symbols. Uh, let's use a narrow slot this time, something small. There we go. Now, often it doesn't line up to the active plane. So I just tap the letter P to line it up. I should really do this straight on, but I'm just going to rotate it. I'm using the object snaps just to line it up. And again, change the grid to make it a bit more accurate. I'm going to put it to five millimeters again. If you're quite zoomed out, you will find it will snap to the nearest object. And you do need to sometimes zoom in just to line it up nicely. Might be a bit close, but I think that's OK. <clears throat> so again, remember, that's not the only object on the drawing. We can say show all and we can see everything that's on there. Um, if I turn off the display of the door, I can see everything. I'll turn off the grid as well. It's quite a fine grid now. And I can see that I've got the cable way on there and the components in the background. So I've now got all the electrical elements. I'm going to right click. Reroute all the nets. Just see how it handles that. Hmm. Interestingly, obviously it's gone straight from the back onto the door. So we haven't really provided a route to get from the wireways at the bottom up to the top. So in this case, what we need to do is provide that additional route. So what I'm going to do is just add a manual route path. It's very straightforward. Just click on define a route path. I'm going to say where it starts from. So I'm going to start from maybe the middle of this section down here. If I can find it, I'm going to tap T to say between two points, this point and this point. If I look from the top, I should be able to just route that to the edge. So the uh, edges that I should really spend some time and put some clips on the side and route it around those clips. But for now, I'm just going to do it quite roughly to the back of the door, somewhere around there. Um, at any point, I can rotate it or I can snap it um, to a particular point. So if I just type the letter S for snap, I can say I want to snap it to a point here on the uh, cable way at the top. I'm going to right click. And a really useful thing here is to just check from a piece of wireway what's connected. And I can see that everything on the back is also connected via this route that I've just assigned. And that route could also have segregation code on it so that I am um, only certain wires go on that uh, particular route. So now I'm just going to right click, reroute all the nets again. And hopefully this time we should be there. OK, that's much neater. So we're routing the wire. It's not tightly tacked, um, pinned to the side, but you can see that it's taking that route and it's then wiring on the actual door. So that's just taken around about half an hour just to put together a circuit diagram and a 3D design and then produce all the documentation that you need for that. Um, if we have a look also then at the cabling information, because we've also got a couple of cables which might be uh, inserted outside of the panel. What I'm going to do is just turn everything on for the moment. I'm going to go to the planes and just show the actual top plane. So the top plane is effectively where it sees the, the zero point. I'm just going to choose Control A and place that on the floor effectively. So I'm going to choose Move with the base point. Zoom right in and choose a point that I think is on the base of it. And then just place it. 
I'm just using the control and the wheel just to position it. I'm just going to drop it on there. If I just turn off that show, turn on the grid, you should see that's now placed nicely on the grid. I'm going to put something on there just to give me a sense of reference for the sizing. I'm going to go down to here and put an element on just a, effectively a person. I'm going to tap Z to rotate them and just put them on there. Um, now, what can be also quite useful is to see how everything looks with the door open. So I'm going to click on the door itself, right click, and choose this modify command again. And I'm going to go down to the bottom corner and put this as being where the reference is. So I'm just going to tap R for reference. Don't know if I can pick that point there. It can be difficult sometimes to catch it, but. I'm going to pick a point on the bottom corner of that door and put it there. Um, and then we can see that we've got this angle here, which we can click and we can open the door. And then this one, I'm going to tap the space bar so I can put this at, say, 90 degrees. And say, yeah, that's fine. Now, again, the routing isn't joined. So what I'm going to do is just turn off display of the, the wires for a moment, click on define route, and I'm going to snap to this end point here and just put it back. Snap, tap the letter S, snap it to this particular point here. I just double check, show connected channels. Yep, they're all connected. And just reroute again. OK, so that's tidy. And we can actually see the back of the door now and see the routing of the wires that's that are in there. So I'm going to put a couple of external devices from the components, remove any filtering, click on the bottom there, and I'm going to put in those motors. So if I zoom up, I've got a couple of motors. Let's have a look. Um, OK, I'm just going to rotate it. Tap the X to rotate it about the X axis. There we go. I'm going to drop it there. I'm not being very accurate about this. I probably should be. Let's just go to a top view so I can position these. Ah, OK, sometimes in 3D, it's difficult to know where something is. OK, so I've got three motors over there. And what I'm going to do is put a, um, a cable gland going through this base plate. So I'm going to right click. Now, I'm not sure if I just click on Explore. I don't think this has at the moment. It's just seen as being a mechanical item. So this is quite interesting. I'm going to have to put a machining definition. So somewhere where I can actually put a hole and send it out to a machine. So I can say, add a new machining definition. And I'm going to click on Planes and define a plane from a surface over here. So I'm going to select. And I want the base point to be in the bottom left, so it's the same as my bottom one on the uh, page. So there. I'm going to call it minus flush mounting. Done. So I've now put a surface on there, which I can mount something on that actual component. So if I click on the component again to find it, it appears in the Explorer, and I can say, right, I want to make that the working area. If I go into my symbols, I'm just going to search for an M20 cable gland. There's loads of different things there. I'm just going to choose this one down here at the bottom. And again, I'm going to tap P to align it to the plane and then align it to where I want it to be. I'm just going to snap there. And again, on the output information, I've got information showing the size of that hole on that particular mounting area. I should really have chosen the whole of it, but I've only got one aspect of it. So. I want to create a route, define path for my cables to follow. So I'm going to click the starting point, just rotate it. I'm going to choose a starting point somewhere around there. Um, we could go directly from there, or I could just go down a little bit if I can get it to do that. Um, maybe I'll just type R for reference or snap, sorry. 
Got a snap to there. Underneath, if I go to the bottom, I can see the other side of the gland that's gone through. And again, I'm going to tap S for snap point, and I'm going to snap it to this outer section. And then if I use a front view, I can just then route it. Now it's through the base of that. I'm just going to go down to the bottom. And let's just look from the top just to make it easy. We know about roughly where we are. I'm going to go out through the back of this. Let's see if I can do it quite straight. And just go up to this point here. As you start moving in a certain direction, so if I click on the vertical, I can snap it to a certain point so that I get it at the right height. So I'm going to just choose one of these connection points. And now as I pass this along, it should provide a route which is ideal for connecting cables into those motors. So we have a separate section panel here at the bottom. Instead of nets, we can go to cables and we can see the cable information, what they're connected from and to, their sizes. And it's just a question of right clicking, route all cables. And it's quite subtle, but it's added the cabling information on here. I can see each one with the individual cores. And it's just followed that routing path out to each of the uh, the motors. If I was to click on one of these, I can see the cabling information. And here I can see it's assigned a length. So in millimeters, it's told me exactly how far it is to that particular point. Excellent. So with that information, um, we can send this out. Obviously, we can save it. If I just click on save, it's not a bad starting point. Um, we can save it as a shop floor module, which means we can then put a separate application, a read-only application on the shop floor, which allows me to work through the wiring and indicate which bits have been mounted where it's been done. So you can see the paths dynamically. And I'll show that in a minute. But also, be aware you can output to DXF, DWG, STL, IGS, and STEP. This is all part of the standard package. There's no additional modules. Um, and also as a 3D PDF file. So you can open it up in a free package, Adobe Acrobat, and you can look at it in 3D, rotate it, um, turn different objects on and off, um, and really analyze the internals of the, uh, the panel. For this one, I'm just going to go to Shop Floor Module, and I'm going to save it on my desktop. Just going to call it webinar 2021. And that's it. It's now output. So I'm going to close this down. I'm back in the 3D in the uh, 2D module. Um, just going to close down that bit there. Any of the information that uh, has been added in the background will also be shown back in here. So if I go into, for instance, the graphical lists into my bill of materials, I'll see that that's also including all of the 3D items. So in there, I've got, for instance, um, what am I looking for? Here, I've got front plinths, I've got the frame, all of the objects that are in there. I can go down to cable plan, show the cabling information, multi-cores. So here I can see the individual connections from and to, and I can see the length that it's actually analyzed and added to that. And I can show things like terminal matrix and show exactly how things are connected and what they're connected to and via what cable. So all of that information is, is there, and it's up to you whether or not you want to make use of that. If I was to close down the package, and on a shop floor machine, I open the shop floor module. i just open this up. Now, this is a rentable module, so you would have to take out maintenance and rent this, and it's about 300 pounds per year for a license, but it lets you open up any of the dot models. So if I just open up the one we just created, it's the same interface that you get. So you see an explorer view, you see uh, a list of views you can set up so you can show just the gear plate or the door. I haven't done any of those, unfortunately. Um, a list of cables, but it comes in with some differences. It, it is read only. It comes in grayed out. You can switch that off if you want to. But because it's grayed out, it means in the Explorer, we can highlight items. So we can say here, 
show me what I need to assemble. So that's the framework. I've got that together. I've assembled it. I click on verified. It's mapped. Put the bolts in. I've fixed that. The back plate, done that. Have I put the door on? Yes, mounted the door. I may do this later, obviously, but in a different order. Put the handle on. And then we get to some electrical components. It's saying this here is uh, push button S1. These are the connection points. Have you mounted it? Yes. Also, down here at the bottom, what wires are connected? I click on this and it's now filtered in a separate panel, a list of the wires. And I can say, right, show me. And it's highlighting because we've got this grayed out. It's easy to see. It's got the root, Yway 8, Yway 11, Yway 103. These are, this is the root it's going to take. This is the length of it. It's a P01, it's the signal name, and it's a red 0 0.5. Done it. Straight away, it goes on to the next one. It says from that same component that we selected, this is the next wire. Click on yes, and that's there. I'm really sorry, I'm going to have to just break for a second. So give me a moment, I'll be back in a moment. I'm back in the room. Sorry about that. The joys of working from home. Um, OK, so. Uh, we don't just have to uh, go via the Explorer list. We can also click on a component in the panel. Again, it's highlighted. We can say where it's been mounted. And we can also filter the wires for that and work through each component, wire it up. And use the uh, Explorer panel to just basically view all the wires and make sure everything's been done. So this accountability allows you to leave the job halfway through. You can go home, come back the next day, and you know which bits have already been done. It also means you know how it's been wired. You know the route that wires have been taken. So you've got accountability. You've got consistency all been added just in a very simple interface there. Uh, we can also ignore this filtering and put our own filtering and say, I want to do it by perhaps color of wire. I've got a reel of black wire. Maybe I click on filter. I say, I want to do this by black wire. So now I've got all the black wires. But I might also want to say, well, I've only got a particular size. So I go to size and say, I've got the 1.5 mil. So I've now filtered, and you see at the bottom, this has been added together. So I've now got the black 1.5. If I go to the top, there's quite a few of these perhaps. I click on each one, say, show me it, and I'm going to wire it. Now, some of these might be actually what we I should have. Um, but you can see each one is then shown to you, and you can wire it, and it's then recorded as to who's done it, when it's been done. And that information, when you close it down, can be saved. And from this package here, we could then open up the 3D again. Takes a bit longer this time. Now it's got all the design in there. And under file, we can go to import the shop floor information from the desktop. It's the same file. But all it's importing here is what's been mounted, so the verification. So whenever I look at a particular component and I look at its wires or the information that's on there, if I look down the nets, for instance, if I click on, let's just choose this one, for instance, here on the wires, I can see that certain wires have been mounted. So you've got a verification there to say whether or not these have been mounted um, and you know what's going on with that. So what we've uh, covered there is really the main points of the 3D uh, panel package. Um, I've shown some of the symbols, obviously, from Schneider 
things like enclosures, terminals, cables, components, um, and the routing information, and sort of optimizing things by using wire segregation category. Um, but we've really covered the bits that we aim to cover on the uh, the webinar. If there are any other questions, uh, now is a point which we're going to just open it up, and if anyone wants to ask it directly via the microphone, you can do. Or if you just want to put it on the chat, uh, my colleague Paul should be helping, but we can have a look at that as well. So thank you for your time. Um, if you don't have any more questions, you're welcome to leave. Otherwise, hang around and ask questions. Hi, John. I have some. I have a little question about the uh, panel shop floor. Yeah, sure. Is it also possible that you select the component and then uh, you can see all the wires on it? Or is just only by uh, the net name or the the color or the the diameter. Uh, let's have a quick look. <clears throat> so, panel shop floor. Just open up the model. So if we um, if we select something simple like this device here, yes, as soon as we click on this filter on the left hand side, all of the wires over here are just for this component. So when I click on the first one, mm -hmm. there is one wire above. If I click on the second one, it's that wire there. So yes, any wire, any component you click on, when you click on this filter option here on the left. It will filter for any wires that are connected to that okay. particular device. Yeah, that I didn't so find. It's, yeah, it's already in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Hi, John. Michael Panos is speaking this side. Hi, Michael. And uh, I have basically question. First question is actually where I can get those models. Yes, and what for what format are they? Okay, good question. <clears throat> so um, most of the modules originate in step format or IGIS format, mm -hmm. and we have um, a set of about a gigabyte of environment information that you can uh, install free of charge with the software. Mm -hmm. We also have a web catalog, which is a feature where you can, if you subscribe, and again, it's it's a couple of hundred pounds for the year, you can download as much data as you like. And we have, um, let me just show you an example. We just go on to here. Uh, we have a web download site. So we can go to 3D symbol libraries and we have lots and lots of manufacturers of data, um, which we can then download directly into the software. So each one comes with, for instance, if I look at Phoenix, it comes with a zip file of all of the models, which you then put into your symbols database, and you can see those uh, symbols in there. You can also very easily create your own symbols just by drag and drop of a model into the environment. So just to illustrate, if you have, for instance, let me just go into Explorer, if you have a model, which you've downloaded from a manufacturer, and, and they're becoming so familiar now, so common, it's quite useful. Um, so if you have a model, you can drag the step file onto the drawing. I'm not sure it's done it. Can you see it counting up in the background? Um, I'll say yes to convert it, and I'll say it's going to be a component. So as it comes in, you can automatically recognize it as an electrical component. Mm -hmm. But uh, now, if we are talking about the connection points, yes, you need to probably do it so manually. Here, on yeah. the assembly, you can say, I want to add some connection points. Mm -hmm. 
and you say whereabouts they go. So I say, uh, let me just rotate that about the X. And I'm going to put those between those two points there. Okay, so you can add connection points. If I click on cancel, if I click on the symbol, go into properties, I can see this is a component. It has a prefix and it has two connection points and I can label these and say this is, I'll put it in uppercase, L and N. So I can now mm -hmm. wire to this. <clears throat> so how he gonna know actually which wire goes to which connection point? You need to assign the potential, or I don't know actually. Um, ah, okay. Yeah. He gonna associate the, associate the connection point on the symbol with the with the, on the model with exactly. the symbol. Yeah? So okay, on the circuit diagram, you must have the same connection points yeah, on yeah. a symbol for it to recognize where it goes to on that device. So that's a very simple connection. Understand. Okay. 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 So. Uh, all right. So basically, when you are because we have, I, I'm working for Veolia. Yes, we met uh, already before. Yes, and yeah. basically, um, when we are do I'm downloading, I'm, if I'm downloading, for example, the part from the web catalog, uh, in most cases he is not coming with the um, uh, to the 2D layout. Yes, and uh, is not coming with the symbol itself if the, if it have any special one. Is there any chance actually to uh, to download like a combo? You know, so basically, you are getting the uh, uh -huh. the the schematic symbols um, are really uh, available mostly with the web catalog. So you should be able to use the web catalog to download the parts information. And if there are schematic symbols for things like drives, inverters, sensors, it should bring down that schematic symbol. Uh, okay. If it's missing, get on get in touch with us, and we'll get our content team to fill it in. But it should be in there. So we, we do try and uh, we work hard to try and make sure all the bits are there. Okay. And next question is about actually only from the curiosity. Uh, when you was wiring the cables, yes, uh, to yep. the motors, you have three of them. And basically, is there, because, I don't know, that uh, gland probably doesn't have its own uh, path inside of it, yes? So basically, like in the same way how the trunking have because when he was putting the trunking they had already yeah. predefined the path inside you, of it you that can block, you block. can attach a small routing to the middle of the symbol so that when you attach one side it goes straight through um i hadn't huh? done that it's just mechanical so yeah i understand you know, the question right. is only basically if you have a three cables more normally they are going through to do three different glands and can you actually assign the correct cable into correct path Yes, okay, that's all. Thank Absolutely. You. Okay, you're welcome. Are there any more questions? Hi, John, this is Nidhi. Hi there, how are you doing? Hi, uh, so uh, in line with Michael's question, I had another question of, so like you said that you are downloading a path from a portal. Uh, do you maintain a database of this uh, panel components into your application? Yes. So um, okay. if we go into the uh, command section under equipment, mm -hmm. we have um, access to something called the equipment editor. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, in fact, the same database information that we see in C Electrical as well. And okay. so for, for each part number, mm -hmm. if we bring up a, a part number for a particular component, we see the description, the information, everything about it, the size, the price maybe. Here, mm -hmm. under defined channels, we have the schematic symbols that can be used. So this can be used with a relay coil with contacts, and these are the terminals, and also possibly a 3D panel symbol. OK, OK. And this so is that where we can, two... sorry, yeah. go, on, go ahead. So you, that means your 2D and 3D database is, is a common at, at one exactly. location. So, yes, yeah. with, okay. with C Electrical, and an mm -hmm. add-on module, that is the case. You can use um, the 3D panel as a standalone application. It's a separate license, and you can mm -hmm. link that standalone to a spreadsheet that perhaps you've generated from ePlan or a different package. And the, mm -hmm. the spreadsheet can list just the parts that you've used and the connection point wiring information. That's all it needs, and it can use that as its, its source for information. So you can use a third-party electrical mm -hmm. design package but the integration is tight 
it's the electrical, of course. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, I have another question. Uh, so when you download a part, uh, how do you prepare a part as to an electrical component? Like, like you assign a connection point. Uh, do you do anything else to uh, uh, to prepare a mechanical component to an electrical one? Um, so I showed bringing in a component here and adding yeah. the connection points. The only additional yeah. information it probably will need is how to attach it to something like a, a DIN rail. So here at the moment, yeah. it has an area underneath, mm -hmm. which is where it would snap with the DIN rail. But at the moment, if I look at this area called block planes, it doesn't mm -hmm. have anything. So it doesn't know how to interact with a rail. So I would yeah. click on define. Mm -hmm. And I would say, this is my zero point. This here is my uh, second, my X value. And this is my Y value. Mm -hmm. And here in the list of additional or existing planes, I can say it's a rail. I can make up my own plane name. But here, if I say it's a DIN rail, if I show it, I think I missed it actually there. Let me just define that again, just so you can see it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I wasn't close enough. Sometimes it's useful to be right in there. There are so many mm -hmm. things it can snap to that it, it is yeah. important. So let me just be a bit more patient. OK, that looks better. Just going to mm -hmm. delete that one. So now that it's got a DIN rail, yeah. All of the properties are, are good. So if I go to the back and put on a piece of DIN rail, I'm not sure it's going to snap, but if I place it on there, if I place it near that, mm -hmm. <laughs> it should snap onto um, it. Yeah. It's I, not snapping at the moment. I think the reference point right. is changing. But yes, yeah, that's the only additional it, information, really. Um, so the only uh, other don't thing. You any, don't you define any terminals on that part? to make it an electromechanical component? Yes, uh, and I showed that earlier. If you go to assembly, you can add connection points. Yeah, so yeah. Connection uh, point. Now, on each connection yeah. point, when you look at the yeah. properties, you can say it's a bolt, or it's a terminal, or it's a screwing connection, or it's a spring cage connection. So you can define the type of connection. And you can mm -hmm. also say, although I put it on the edge of the symbol, maybe I need an additional 20 millimeters of cable of, of wire to, to do that. So you add an additional length as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So you can define yeah. everything about that connection point from there so that you get the right termination information or perhaps torque value or whatever is needed. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. You can also say whether it can take more than one wire. So you can say this can have two wires going into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And the only other thing possibly could mm -hmm. be a mounting space so that you can say actually around this component, I want to mm -hmm. have 10 millimeter space for heat dissipation. Mm -hmm. So now when I check the component in here and say, show me the mounting box, if I just choose this one, mm -hmm. I can see it's got a space around it and it will show yeah. a collision if anything is within that area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there are other things you can do with the symbol, but really importing it, yes. setting it as a component, adding connection points, and making sure it snaps onto a particular rail or mounting plane. Yeah, yeah really, that's great. Yeah. And Good. one last thing is that I, I was really impressed with the way the wires being routed uh, through the cable managers or the channels. It's neat, isn't so it? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I was just wondering that you have just added these uh, cable managers, and uh, and then when you created the netlist, the wires followed the proper path and got routed automatically through those channels. So that's yeah. something which is really very, very, very. Uh, uh, it's it's designed for electrical engineering, so it's 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 meant to try and make it as easy as possible. So yeah, I'm not you know I'm not an expert on this, so. If it looks easy, it's because it is pretty easy to do. So, yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Hi, John. Paul Jackson, Blackburn Starling. Paul, how are you doing? All right. Thank you. 
A couple of questions, really. I, th I think I've seen this before, but if you had an isolator on a back plate and a handle on a door, can you can you make those up and put the punchings on the door? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you would have to have the obviously have the door closed, and if I just drop it back into position onto there, um, you'd make up the the component in the background, and it has a snap point on the back, and then the 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 shaft and the handle are a separate object which you then bring in and it snaps into position on the door because it's important it's two parts because you've got two different uh, mounting you've got a mounting on the door and a mounting on the actual back of it in the shaft basically so it has to be two separate items you can't bring it in as a, a component with the shaft and the the item for the door um, i don't have an example so for next time i will get an example of that but it's just a question of getting to getting the right um, snap point on the actual component itself, so it snaps onto the door, and also aligns with the component in the background. Okay, I might, so might yeah. have seen that on one of you. Might have seen that on one of your YouTube videos. Can't remember. Yeah, if it's not um, there, it, it it will be soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah. And then the other one was, if if you don't have a, a step file or something to start with, can you create a, a block from scratch? Yeah, you can. So if you know the height of something, you could just choose the, the box command, for instance. Just draw a box. And then you've got the the information there, uh, which is just a, a very basic graphic. You can also bring in a 2D graphic or draw a graphic and extrude it. So you can use a, a 2D design, extrude it so you've got the depth on it and use that as your as your block. So you've got all the kind of 3D tools there for adding unioning graphics together to add them together to you know sweep cut and again i'm not very great i'm not very good at that but you can design your own thing from scratch okay thanks sounds interesting okay. cool so one more question because uh, yeah I, I believe that actually the 3d design in this would be problematic but uh, can you actually show a uh, display an edges because when you are you was looking for example for the uh, for the points you know to refer yeah it is sometimes very helpful to display basically the edges of the of the model itself then it is much easier to snap on the on the point or this is impossible um i'm not sure i follow what you mean by the address edges edge so for oh, example the edges. Can, yes. edge detection yeah sorry yes. um uh... I Sorry, think my... the edge. No, no, no. Absolutely right. Um, so on the snapping, you have edge. I mean, obviously, when you're snapping, um, if I wanted to to move this, if I choose hmm? move uh, with a base point, um, I can use edge detection. So relative point or edge intersection or the point on an edge. So I can choose an edge point from here. So if I choose the edge, and I can say I want that particular point on the edge. Uh, and then you can see the one particular one. OK, understand. And then where I want to move it to, again, I can use that edge intersection or point on edge, or I can use an object snapped if it's on the same plane. Mm -hmm. So yes, they, they should appear. And certainly placing the DIN rail, I was making good use of that sort of uh, object snap for the edge of the uh, items. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah, because probably if you would show all of them, it would problematic. Take a while. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Yeah. Hi, John. Uh, it's Chris Robinson here. Hi, Chris. Uh, just a quickie. You've seen you do the a wiring list that you've generated from this with lengths and cables and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Is there a similar functionality for a cutting list for trunking and DIN rail, and also a way to allocate each size on a on a representation, a graphical representation? I'm just going to see if I've got something on the channel rail and channel report. Yes, I mean that information is in there, so yes, it should be possible to get it out. It's not particularly nicely formatted, I have to admit. So yeah. sorry about the format, but you can see a list of yeah. the actual rails, cable channels and their lengths um, so yeah. if you've combined that with the length of each component that you buy you could work out a cutting list so you could do that in the report the reports are quite yeah. flexible so yeah 
But is there a way to allocate, for instance, there you've got product to U17 to mm -hmm. uh, a piece actually on the image itself, saying that 375 lump of rail needs to go in that position? Um, at the moment, it, it's it's basically just highlighting all the wireways yeah. and cableways that we've got in there. I haven't, unfortunately, added the equipment code, so I don't know what part number, okay. and I should really have done that. Yeah. So I've then got a list of what parts being used and how many pieces are on what length they are. Right. Okay. Thanks, John. Okay. Okay. I think if no one has any more questions, by all means, uh, get in contact with us and email questions to us afterwards. Um, remember, the uh, the webinar will be available later, so you can look over this if necessary. Um, but thank you very much for your time. And thanks, everyone, for their questions. And I hope you have a good uh, rest of the week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.